both of my partners seem to have managed. <laughs> um, one of them was never here, the other one seems to have disappeared halfway through. But anyway, I chose Britain. Now, most of you probably think of Britain as uh, dreary and cold and rainy most of the time, and you're mostly right. It is often cold and rainy, but it does have sunshine, and it's actually quite beautiful on those days. When you get to um, London, you'll be landing in London. It's about an uh, eight-hour flight. Um, first thing you'll see day one is Buckingham Palace. Um, the Queen does live there. It's a private residence. They have guided tours. You can't just wander around the palace by yourself if you want. But it is a spectacular building. A big feature a lot of people like to come for is the gardens out front of the palace. Then you can move on to um, St. Paul, Paul's Cathedral. And uh, it actually has a pretty interesting history. It's 1,400 years old, and there's actually been five separate churches built on this one spot. The first three were burned down, and there were not, the next couple were knocked down, and the final one was built. Um, then you can move on to Tower of London. It's coming up on a thousand years old in um, 2035, I believe. So it's also a pretty old building. This is actually the original structure. Um, it has a very interesting history. It's been a prison at times. It's been a military fort. Currently, the crown jewels of the royal family are held there. And um, on day two, move on to take a tour of Big Ben. That's this clock right here. And uh, it has a interesting history as well. Um, the original clockwork that was designed for it didn't actually fit in the tower. So, they had to have to commission a second clock that didn't work to be built inside the tower, taking it piece by piece up the stairwell, and the tower itself is only about as big as this building. So it was quite, quite an adventure. Um, right next to Big Ben is the London Eye, which is a giant Ferris wheel. It was built in 90, 1999, and it gives you, aside from uh, another building called the, the Shard, that's built uh, about a mile away, gives you the best view of London that there is. And it's actually pretty spectacular tonight. In, on the, um, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the celebration, but around New Year's, they actually fire fireworks off of this over the river, and it's actually pretty beautiful. The next tour you'll go on to is the Tower Bridge ex Exhibition. And a lot of people think this is called the London Bridge, and cabbies actually, whenever they get in American tourists, when you tell them we want to see the London Bridge, this is what they'll take them to. Just because they know, people think of this as the London Bridge. It's actually not. You get to go into the uh, engine room and see the Victorian engine. It's been running since um, 1826. And of course, at the end of the day, you go on to uh, Prince of Wales Theatre and you can see a play. There's lots of things playing there. You can see um, anything from Mamma Mia to Greece and uh, Les Miserables and so on. Day three is just a shopping day. You can go to Harrods, which is actually more the world famous shopping center in London. Um, you move on to uh, Westfield Shopping Center, and which is a, just kind of a big open market. <coughs> and Covent Garden, which is also another famous center. And that evening you go on to dine at Bianca which is uh, five-star restaurant. It's very nice from the reviews. I hope you really that. <coughs> Day four, um, you travel a little bit outside of London to where the Harry Potter films were filmed. Um, you can see the props. You can see all the neat stuff. 
stuff. Um, then after the Harry Potter tour, you get to go to the British Museum. You can see Egyptian mummies, you can see uh, actual Egyptian chariots, gold-plated chariots. Um, you can see Greek frescoes, marble statues. Um, you can see uh, pagan artifacts from ancient in England. There's, it's not just world artifacts. There's actually a few things from England there, too. Um, and then, of course, there's a lot of interesting artwork. Um, the nice thing about going to England is if you buy the London Pass, all of the museums, except for Tate Modern, are included on the pass. And all of your transportation, so the metro, bus lines, all of it is included in the pass. So it's very nice savings to pick up a couple hundred dollars. Um, at the end of day three, you go to Stanford University and you see a Shakespeare play. English, of course, is better than anyone. Day five, you move out of London to Windsor. And you can see uh, Windsor Castle. You can see the changing of the guard there as well. Um, this is actually the Queen's uh, uh, ball home, if you want. There's also a big hunting ground around there, and there's actually deer that wander through all of the gardens around the castle there. Um, and at night, if you, you can take two tours around uh, Windsor Castle. You can go during the day, mid-afternoon, or you can go in the evening, and at the end of the tour, which is a private tour, you can have a glass of champagne. After that, you go on to see Stonehenge, which is an uh, ancient Celtic monument built in the same time as the pyramids. Um, it's actually a pretty fascinating area, and people, a lot of people say that there's palpable energy you can feel when you go there. And then that night, you go to Cayley's Lounge in McDonald's Hotel, not McDonald's. McDonald, and another very fine five-star hotel. Day six in Windsor, you kayak the coast. Um, Jurassic Coast in Dorset is a famous place where there's they found a lot of giant um, nautilus or ammonites around that area. They found a lot of uh, dinosaur bones there as well. Um, it's a really spectacular coast. You can also see, uh, oh, I wish I could remember the name of the coast, but they're, the, they're called the Chalk Coasts. It's actually a pretty interesting contrast between the ocean, the green, and then the, uh, the white of the coast. And on day six, you can relax in the town of Bath with the only hot springs located in England. You can see the ancient, and this, this is the reason that the city was built here actually, because in um, the 500s, the Romans came to England and they built this city on the hot springs. So you can see a lot of the ancient um, Roman buildings. Um, you can't actually bathe in the hot springs that the Romans built because they used lead piping, but there are uh, replica, replica Relax. And then, end of the day, 3 o'clock, step back off to America. Travel, you don't really need to worry about uh, vaccines. You just need to prove that you've had vaccines done. There's nothing special like uh, typhoid or anything like that. It's a um, pretty low risk area. Um, here's the cost breakdown. The big majority of it is actually the airfare, which is $1,500, and this is actually pretty cheap um, adventure for you. Uh, total, it's only about $5,000. Here's a comparison of uh, a couple of the currency. Um, the euro and the British pound are actually <coughs> pretty close together. Um, England is actually getting out of the eurozone. So if you travel to England, you want to make sure that you have uh, Euro and the British Pound. They could be used both places. Here's uh, an outline of your schedule. And here's another look at the expenses. As you can 
see big 